What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and joining me today is Alex, aka Chili, with uh, Octo Miner, and we are going to talk a little bit about cryptocurrency and mental health. It's been a topic that uh, him and I have been discussing here recently, so we decided we'd make a video about it. And down in the description below, you can find affiliate links for Octo Miner, etc. So, welcome on the channel. This is the first time, I guess. Okay. Yeah, meeting in the flesh. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It's super nice meeting you. Yep. So we had kind of talked a little bit about mental health and like cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and so on. Um, Twitter seems to be a, a cesspool of, <laughs> of, uh, of <laughs> craziness when you get yeah. into cryptocurrency and it definitely can have an impact on you mentally. I've definitely uh, had my fair share of uh, depressed states, hyper excited states and um, as far as from a mental health perspective, you know, those, those huge swings of, uh, you know, hills and valleys can be uh, quite intense and affect everything from your family life to, yeah. you know, your fitness and all of that, right? So mm -hmm. um, you said you've been kind of looking into it more recently or whatever. What have you been kind of doing regarding that? Yeah, so for, for me, when I was just um looking to see like what youtube channel that i could maybe come up with um it's something that i'm really passionate about as far as like mental health i was looking around just our community and checking out other channel topics and just what people were doing and there wasn't a lot of other youtubers like really focusing on mental health and kind of just the impact that it can have and does have on miners, uh, business owners, um, traders, I mean, really anything crypto related with um, mental health, so. Like emotions tied to, mm -hmm. uh, a good one would be like uh, right off the bat, that's easy, is like emotions that are tied to the price of crypto, right? Yeah, that would be, that could be a topic, yeah, for a video, um, and then also, um, you know, for, for me, being a home miner, um, you know, prices for like GPU hardware and like you said earlier, effects that it has on the family and stuff. And, um, you know, one that probably doesn't get talked about a lot is overextending yourself, like buying stuff on credit and having market drop and just the impact that, you know, people taking huge losses. Um, you read about it in the news a lot, but as far as like talking openly about it, it's not really seen a lot on YouTube. Right. So... And then taking everything with sort of like a, a grain of salt when you're on crypto Twitter too and realizing mm -hmm. that like if you are getting like into an argument with someone or like someone seems to come across rude to you, that sort of thing. <laughs> One is like yeah. first things first, the text is already going to make it kind of hard to like yeah. interpret, right? And then moving past that, the next thing you have to consider is that you know, that person may be in one of those positions of a dark time, like maybe they did over leverage and they woke up and they're completely wiped out and they're freaking out and they're taking it out on people yeah. on Twitter, right? And uh, I'd say I've even been guilty of that, right? <laughs> Where I'm just like, sure. no, I haven't over leveraged or anything, but you know, right. I yeah. had to shut off my whole farm last week, right? So, you know, that can be quite stressful because you're like, well, now at this point, like, you just feel like a failure, right and then some dude pops off on twitter and then you just go crazy and then it, yeah. it just it doesn't help anything either because i think by and large just social media in general you know it's a uh, it's a dopamine hit like my phone keeps lighting up here and i'm like oh i got right. go, i got to go look at this right now or whatever luckily it's just a picture of my son at the water park but yeah um there's a you know you're always pulling down and refreshing and, and checking Twitter. And I'll find myself just like being like, why are you checking? Like, yeah. Even as a YouTuber that like, I will always have some, like I could probably refresh at any time and get like something new to look at, right? Mm -hmm. Immediately or a reply or something. But just the, uh, the addiction of pulling that down, I've become way more acutely aware of. Yeah. And then tying that to, um, basically whether or not I'm going to be in a good mood or a bad mood in that moment, right? Which then can affect your family, right? You pull that down and someone's like, you're awesome. All of a sudden you're in a good mood and you have a good mood. Yeah. Right? Or you pull it down and somebody's like, F you. And you're like, ah, oh, and then like, yeah, that yeah, bleeds sure. over into family dinner or into the family. Or during your work day. Yeah. yeah. Or during yeah. work day. 
And then, um, yeah, that can actually put me in a completely <laughs> different mood and when I'm, before I'm about to record a video. Right. Yeah. Where, like, it'll be like, oh, now I'm just in a bad mood while I'm trying to record a video, right? And it's complete, it's, it's almost completely unnecessary, uh, except as someone like you that, like, yeah. we, so you work for, like, a company where you do a lot of the social media interaction, or like me, I and do a tickets. lot of... Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of times where I'll be jumping back, there's a lot of multitasking, or stopping, pausing, and then jumping something else, and your attention gets split in all these directions, mm -hmm. and based on people reaching out to you, what you read on social media, uh, even even bringing Discord and other com platforms of communication, you have Rocket Chat and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. It really can depend on, change your mood really fast. Um, I think the goal of what I want to try to open up for my channel and this whole mental health topic is to, just have an open conversation with people if they're willing to talk about it. So for me, like I struggle with a lot of mental health. I take um, prescribed medication for like anxiety and depression, and I've been through a lot of stuff in my life. You know, we've shared a lot of personal discussions since yeah. we've been here at the conference, and I've had a chance to really hang out and get to know each other, and that's been really awesome. And I kind of want to bring that to YouTube and our community with different people that just are making it aware that it's okay to talk about it. And like, it, even if it's small or large, like knowing that like our community has so much to offer and like, you're not alone. And, you know, I think people in general tend to just try to deal with everything on their own. And I'm not saying like, if you have a problem, like the community has to solve it, but more of just, being open to talk about it and it could help someone else right, right. so like you and I talking um has really like um allowed me to get to know you more in person right. rather than just through YouTube right and so I kind of wanted to just try to bring those personal conversations about certain topics to the crypto community so other people can watch and kind of be engaged and um you know <laughs> being someone on a platform that such as youtube everyone's saying like this isn't financial advice right, right. so my goal is not to provide like mental <laughs> health, mental health advice. yeah it's more yeah. of like um just having the topics be talked about publicly so yeah <laughs> we picked the great spot no it's okay i keep going right in front of scott <laughs> um so one of the quotes I like a lot uh, that I saw recently, like, is if they don't know you personally, don't take it personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that one's like, so you always see all these quotes. I saw another one from, like, Will Smith that was super ironic because of, like, his position where I think that was actually the quote from Will Smith. So I chuckled at the same time. Mm. But it's like one of those things where it's like because of all the stuff that happened with, like, what was it, Chris Rock or whatnot. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So it was like... It, it, now, Chris Rock probably knows him personally, whatever, but just the everybody, the idea that it's very clear that everybody has these issues, right? And yeah. we can we can say the cool quote, right? We can like Will Smith can say the cool quote, but like actually like manifesting that in your life can be something difficult to do. For sure. And For sure. the fact is, is if you're trying to do that on your own, you're going to be a lot less successful unless you have a community that is also trying to basically uh, improve within that same manner. Right. So yeah. I think that's a very good idea. I do like it. And it is something that I struggle with as well. Like I said, anything from prices going up and down to the way somebody responds to you on Twitter to the way somebody responds to you within YouTube comments. And then what, what that would do, I think is if you, you do have people that are more open uh, about like their mental health issues, how different things like social media and stuff impact and it impacts it, then uh, people would probably become more aware of them personally. And then at that point, it reduces it within the community, right? It reduces mm -hmm. those attacks because then if I know you, I'm not going to get on Twitter and be like, uh, see Chili and be like uh, <laughs> on Twitter and be like, oh, he pissed me off with this word and be like, fuck you, Chili, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to be a lot less likely to do that, right? 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, well, maybe he's having a bad day. I know he had these kind of things going on in his life right now. And that's the other thing that you got to take into account, right? Like, you never know. Like, it could literally be somebody's child died that day, and that's why they're like, sure. you know, you never know. For right? sure. Um, I, I think the, that's always the worst case scenario for me whenever I think about something. So, um, But just a dark day in general, right? So, and And I think that everybody has those stories. And there's also, you know, there's a, like, I think a lot of it, at least for me that I've noticed, is, is, is it's always a mirror of yourself, right? Yep. Like, um, and there is, like, the shame and, like, the guilt that goes along with, like, certain things. And we don't want to admit or acknowledge that shame or guilt. And so instead we lash out, right? Mm -hmm. And I think like that's a very, as a YouTuber, I see that a lot because I get a lot of like influx into me or whatever. And then I'll be like, okay, well, you know, that guy made a good point, but sometimes maybe I don't want to admit that, right? Or whatever it is. I think I've gotten better at that over the years, but it's still hard to this day to, you know, try to be as objective as possible, as honest with yourself as possible and, and all of that, right? Um, so yeah. And I think like, if you're going to do that with YouTubers, it'd be really interesting too. Cause then if we get into the mental health in YouTube, I think it's mm -hmm. absolutely insane too. So yeah. Um, to kind of comment on what you just talked about, um, being in the tech web industry, I'm more newer to crypto than the last couple of years. Um, I did a talk a couple of years ago at a WordPress conference on, um, mental health and imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. And so like, you know, that was really, I was really passionate about that. And it's, you know, imposter syndrome is kind of like you, you know, you have kind of like dual personalities, but it's more in your mind of, you know, you, you touched on like struggling with the guilt and, you know, kind of lashing out and with imposter syndrome, you know, you're, you're kind of in person, you're one way, but then you can be another way, maybe online. And right. so... And I think a lot of us do that and we hide behind, not maybe hide, but we use these platforms or communication mediums to um, be really in control of ourselves and kind of only communicate in a certain way. But then in real life, we're like totally different. And so yeah. that we, we internalize and we don't really see like how our behavior is uh, kind of received online um, sometimes. And really like I've struggled with imposter syndrome and you know, you, you just, you, you build up doubt, your self-confidence changes, your behavior changes and um, not so much Jekyll and Hyde, but sort of kind of similar along the same principles is it's, um, it's just different. And so yeah. like, I really want to kind of touch base on that and, you know, people that are just want to have an open discussion, just, um, provide that to the community. Um, I'll, I'll be one to, you know, um, not be shy about my personal life throughout these conversations and really go through stuff, um, you know, through my past drinking problems and, um, stuff with that I've gone through, you know, and yeah. it has shaped me to kind of really encouraged me to maybe like take this step out into the community that's you know a little bit um nerve-wracking but and it's newer you know whenever you try something right. new it's like you don't know how it's going to be perceived well, and, and becoming vulnerable on, online mm -hmm. can be pretty yeah. difficult too and i know because i've done it a few times <laughs> I, I, so. yes i know <laughs> um, yeah. and the thing is is uh, one of the things that happens there is when you do that, uh, people will use that in the future as an attack. Yeah. And that yeah. has happened a lot, right? So um, I think like uh, going through like the separation with my wife and like talking about that and being more honest about it, you know, later on down the line when somebody gets mad or wants to argue with you, they're like, well, you're just a piece of shit and it's because of your separation and all this. And you're like, okay. And yeah. you have to sit back and go, okay, I understand they're mad. They're going to bring that up to make the attack, but that's not actually what a valid argument right. is. So let's get back to a valid argument. But then handling that like mentally is like extremely can be extremely difficult. So I understand that. And then the imposter syndrome that gets into that too, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I could. I've been doing YouTube for twelve years. Uh, IT specialist for you know fifteen something like that. You know, uh, 
working in the IT field, doing specifically tech-related stuff on YouTube for maybe like eight or nine years, and then doing crypto for six years yeah. specifically on YouTube. And still, like I think I said to you, like I can, I literally feel like I wake up and I, it's crypto from 8 a.m. to midnight. That's all I do, and I still don't think I know what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do you really manage that and say, okay, well, here's where I have a good skill set, especially if you have a whole bunch of like attacks and stuff that you're dealing with to it on one side, right? So yeah. mentally, yeah, that can be like taxing, right? So yeah. All of that, I definitely think, like you said, is important to cover and, and be honest about with people too, right? Because then hopefully at least somebody goes, oh, okay, I can relate to that, right? And then maybe it does help them. And it doesn't need to be anything, like you said, where the, like, the community has to come out and help them, but understand, if just by other people awareness, being, yeah. awareness yeah. can be super helpful, right? And people being more honest and vulnerable with each other because the fact is, is we all have that stuff, right? Like, and we all have different things that we're dealing with. We all have things that we maybe uh, have gotten wrong that we don't want to like expose. But mm -hmm. the fact is like, I think like on the last video, I had a video review of the 7950X. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I put at the end, I had, I was putting the RAM slot in backwards. I left it in the B-roll. Because I was like, yeah. hey, look, I do that too. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've been doing this for like over a decade, and I still got the RAM, the RAM stick backwards. And I was like, I'm just going to leave that in there. Just a little thing of like, hey, I, have, I make mistakes too. You know what I mean? And I think that's important for everybody. You know? one, one thing that I also um, think people don't talk a lot about is a lot of YouTubers I see are doing this on the side outside of their full-time job. Yeah. Um, I've worked remote since 2014 fully without going back into an office. So I've been doing it, you know, for almost nine years. Um, and it's hard. There's some people that go into the office or they work remote. And so also there's a whole other culture, uh, especially since, you know, we went through the COVID pandemic of, people transitioning to being so used to being in an office where they're interacting with people mm -hmm. versus working remote where you're kind of more isolated and that totally can have an impact on your mental health as well right. and so you know i want to also open up those conversations for people that work at home and also people that work in an office and you know um, several youtubers that i know in our circle they do it there's a few that do remote work plus our full-time youtuber full-time um and then there's some that work in an office where they travel come home and they're working around their family schedule mm -hmm. their kids and doing youtube on the side and it's like those are two completely different schedules and dynamics of that can impact your mental health so like i would love to open up discussions of how people navigate that what are some of the struggles you've encountered how have you overcome them um you know because for me i started off doing um crypto on the side outside outside of my remote job and now i kind of do it uh my full-time job is crypto for octominer but now i'm kind of venturing into this side thing with youtube and wanting to do that so for me, uh, I'm going to have to kind of figure out my schedule with my family. And I have, I've like barely even started. So, but I'm really passionate about this topic. And yeah. so like, it's something I want to pursue and, you know. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, uh, the work life balance, I'm not like, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would recommend YouTube for, to people in a, in a lot of cases because it can be, I think like I've had, definitely had like i've pushed on youtube pretty hard while i had a day job to be able to be successful at it which yeah. really did mean at the end of the day i sacrificed time and that time is time i could have spent with family or whatever it is mm -hmm. right just because my schedule was like you know for work was like 8 a.m to 4 p.m come home like 4 to 7 i would work on youtube videos and then 8 to midnight i would work a lot of times so that was kind of like my schedule but which meant basically 8 a.m to like midnight sometimes 1 a.m 2 a.m or whatever was my that was what, go to bed rinse repeat and I, I didn't 
spend a lot of time with the kids and the, like for those specific times in my life. Yeah. And um, it can be difficult to kind of manage that time. So I would never say that I had that figured out because I don't think I did. Yeah. Um, once I was able, once I was able to, you know, go full time with the YouTube and we'll see if that continues or whatever, I was able to start participating more with the kids and so on, which was like a, a goal of mine. But then a lot of the time to, a lot of the time it took to get there, uh, was a full sacrifice. Yeah. But then it was, uh, I think it was, uh, Jordan Peterson says, um, I, I like him a lot. He said, uh, um, the one thing in common, one thing, the one thing that successful people have in common is that they had to sacrifice something, right? There's sacrifice involved, and uh, you just have to be careful on what you sacrifice. Yeah. Which, like, I had that conversation with my wife recently because bear market, all that stuff going on. I was like, hey, like, we're gonna have to sacrifice something. And like previously, I think with like the work that I did, right, I would just be like, I would just make the decision that I'm just going to sacrifice my time. Right. And I think like, especially with the relationship, that's hard because it's like, I didn't have that conversation with her. It was like, oh, I'm just going to, this is what I'm going to do. Right. Yeah. And uh, I think now I'll try to bring her back into that conversation and be like, okay, what are we going to sacrifice yeah, yeah. together? And then hopefully that. So I'm not sacrificing that along with whatever else we have to sacrifice, right? Like for for me, when I was working full time doing project management for my previous career, doing um, in the web industry for a web uh, agency, um, and then I started working at Octominer part time. Like that was work, mm -hmm. kid time, bedtime, sleep, and then start Octominer in the evening, I had to really be in communication with my spouse and my wife to um, say like, here's, here's kind of what this looks like, how are we going to make this work? And like, I think not only just doing YouTube, but just any part-time job, like I think that it's good to just discuss that for like mental health stuff, mm -hmm. um, family schedules, you know, because I think all of us that are married, we want to make sure we're not blocking out our partner um, yeah. to make idols of like part-time jobs or whatever, it, whatever that may be. And, you know, making that like our, our hundred percent focus. Um, and I, I realize that we have to sacrifice stuff if we want to yeah. like, you know, build and, and create or, you know, build up, make something. But um, I think just being aware of that and just having the discussion, yeah. um, publicly and privately like is so powerful and really healthy and that's just the stuff I want to kind of just dig into um and just share so mm -hmm. but yeah I think it's perfect so where can people find you so something I wanted to also provide is um a resource that has really helped me in the past okay. um when I was um, doing a lot of WordPress stuff, there was a nonprofit that actually is, um, you can find them on Slack, um, okay. and it's a bigorangeheart.org. Okay. And they actually provide um, free resources for mental health. Okay. That um, they have actually access to like trained counselors and like ranges from, you know, if you're struggling with like your diet or losing weight or whatever, they have someone to talk to all the way up to, hey, I am like really in a dark place. And then they will like walk alongside you. Um, primarily it was kind of uh, created out of like remote workers, okay. right? And, but it's for anyone and it's free. So like um, we can put the link down in the description yeah, to that, uh, sure. just a big orange heart .org. And And, um, but you can find me, um, on Discord, um, we have an Octominer Discord server that is public. Um, you can find me um, at Chili Mining on Twitter. Um, you can also, uh, I manage our Twitter for Octominer, so most of the time you, that's me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, anytime you guys want to talk or, you know, I'm, I'm an open book. And, cool. So. And I'll leave the affiliate links for Octominer in the description <laughs> as well. So if you guys want to go check it out and snag those. And uh, MOQ's done right now. Yep. Just ended on the 4th. Is that right? Yep. 
Uh, when's the next one going to be? Do you know? A while? Uh, yeah, hopefully before the end of December, okay. Q4. That'll be our last one for the year. Okay. Yep. So we'll have one more for Q Q4. Mm -hmm. Cool. It'll probably sneak in right before the year ends because this one was a little like very end of September for yeah. Q3. So, but we'll, we'll get it in. Awesome. Cool. Yep. So look forward to that. By the way, that I guess the MOQ stands for what? Minimum order quantity. Minimum order quantity. And that just means that you can order. I know what it means as far as like practically, it means you can order one. <laughs> yeah, some people don't know the way. Instead of a whole bunch. Yeah. Uh, because basically production costs, all that sort of stuff, right? Is it's, mm -hmm. And the type of industry that you're in, you usually do a bulk order and that sort of thing. And then there are new uh, potential product releases launches stuff we can talk about or not yeah about? Uh, a little so upcoming Something. new product stuff for the website will be um launching and adding brand new asics okay. on our website for sale for so selling ASICs. for sale yeah okay. we'll have a vendor we'll work with and so we'll be providing that um at discounted costs then for Octo minor brand stuff. We're going to be releasing, um, trying to figure out how to word this. <laughs> it will be related around ASICs for the home minor at first. Okay. And, you know, so some people can kind of guess what that'll be around. Um, yeah. But we will have like an official product launch. We'll be coming out with a teaser video. And that hopefully we're looking to get that launched before the end of October. Cool. So a few awesome. more weeks. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit the like, comment, subscribe, and notification bell down below. Share it out with your friends, family, and whoever you think might benefit from it. And I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to check out this video up here or hit the subscribe button. I would also like to mention that you can check out exclusive content over on sonofatech.locals.com. Becoming a member is free. And if you would like access to specialized posts, there is a $5 supporter option that helps me support the channel and keep things running.